So the last part that I'm just going to talk about in two minutes is about the flight of the wasps between microcosms. So once a wasp leaves one microcosm, it has to get in into a receptive microcosm in order to carry its pollen, the pollen from uh, the fig in which it was born. And we now know that doing genetics that wasps can transport pollen as far as 160 kilometers. Now obviously they are not flying actively for 160 kilometers but this is also partly wind blown and partly wasp uh, mediated transport and we've been looking at this looking at uh, flight abilities of these wasps, intrinsic flight abilities. These wasps are just two millimeters in size. So please think of a very, very, very tiny wasp. So we tether these uh, and we do what is called uh, optical tachometry. So we have a laser guided, uh, a laser beam which will cut the wings of a tethered uh, fig wasp. And every time the wasp uh, flies or uh, flaps its wings we are able to capture it uh, using an mp3 sound card uh, process so we've been looking at flight uh, performance of these different wasps we've been looking at how much fuel they have in their body when they leave do they have enough gas in the gas tank so to speak so we are looking at uh, total li lipid stores we've been looking at metabolics how fast this fuel is burnt up using a metabolic chamber and very interestingly we found that we can divide our wasps in this microcosm into two categories the fast wasps and the slow wasps the fast wasps are just have a very short adult life they live for one day or three days they are in a great hurry to get to the mic next microcosm where they can lay their eggs uh, which means that they've got to do things very, very fast. Their metabolic rates are fast. Their flight mechanisms are fast. Everything is fast about them. And then we have the slow wasps, which are the carnivorous wasps, which can live up to about 20 days in the adult life. And they can go a bit slower. And so all their parameters are much slower. So we have now contrasted two fixed species. One is Ficus racimosa on the bottom uh, where the trees are spread much further apart naturally and there's another Ficus hispida on the top where I've shown you all the trees are much closer. So if you're a wasp that has to move from one hispida tree to another you don't need too much fuel in your gas tank, you don't need much of a flight ability but if you are in a wasp in a community in Ficus racimosa at the bottom, you will need much more flight capability. And what we have shown very clearly is that the Ficus hispida, which is shown on the left side of each of those graphs, they have much slower, a shorter flight duration, they have much lower lipid content, and their metabolic rate is much lower. Uh, exactly what we, what we had predicted, they don't need much fuel in the gas tank, they don't need to be able to fly very far because their trees are much closer. So I think that uh, our, you know, a comparison is also helping us to understand how these communities of wasps are organized. So this is my uh, uh, almost final slide, where I'm trying to indicate a whole host of interactions within this one little tiny microcosm. And we are just scratching the surface because we have so much more that we need to go deeper and deeper in order to be able to understand. Uh, fixed species are so diverse. Even in India, we have, as I said, about 80, 85 species of figs throughout the country. Different sizes of microcosms, different numbers of wasps, uh, different gates, different rules, different volatiles. So we need a lot of comparative work uh, to happen in this. Uh, I think I'm going to stop here, maybe just give you the last slide showing you, and this is something I haven't talked about, these 
you can see ants and nasty ants, predatory ants, but you can also see some wasps sitting. They seem to be not bothered. They are not bothered because they have, are protected by chemical mimicry. These are uh, uh, wasps that mimic the cuticular hydrocarbons of the fig microcosm surface. So when the ants walk on top of them, the ants can't tell the difference whether they are walking on the fig surface or they are walking on a wasp. As long as the wasp remains absolutely still. If the wasp moves, then the ant will pick it up. So there is so much of wonderment that we can find in just opening up a little microcosm and the whole world opens up for us. So I think I'll stop here and thank you very much for inviting me. It's been a great honor for me to participate. Thank you.